Imagine a date in the near future. A tech company has rolled out an exciting and terrifyingly powerful new service. Consciousness Uploading. Also known as mind uploading, it's a process in which a person's brain is scanned. Their memories of experience, their emotions and thoughts are duplicated digitally, creating a valid copy of the individual that can live arguably forever. But many transhumanists hope that one further crucial step can be taken beyond just making a copy. In the 2014 sci-fi film Transcendence, Johnny Depp's character plays a man dying of cancer, whose company is working on mind uploading. And after a copy of his consciousness was created, he succumbs to the disease. But at the point of death, his original mind or soul is transferred onto this copy. Or so it seemed. And interestingly, the film explores this very question of whether or not this digital version is actually the man that the other characters knew and loved. This is one of the big questions with this technology, if it ever becomes possible. And most will admit we are a long way off technologically. But make no mistake, the path is being laid down. Companies like Neuralink, Synchron, and BrainGate are creating mind-machine interfaces. Merging with machines, allowing people to mentally initiate tasks with only thoughts. These are early efforts at being able to map the human mind. But would people really try this? Who would be crazy enough to actually attempt this? In 2021, a Swiss company began 3D printing suicide pods that offer a painless, relatively quick way to end one's life. It actually did not infringe on any laws in the country although the company admittedly does not expect any widespread acceptance of the device just yet. But it could be here sooner than expected. We can always empathize with the sick and the physically suffering, wanting to utilize euthanasia, but what about healthy youth who simply don't want to live anymore? A 23-year-old Belgian woman who survived the Brussels airport terror attack who was 17 at the time, recently decided to euthanize herself. She suffered from severe mental health issues and PTSD, haunted by her experiences. The average human brain has 86 billion neurons, all interacting with each other in unique ways. And somewhere in this electrical storm of firing neurons is our memories. It may be a daunting task, but to a scientist, it would only be a matter of finding the regions housing these memories and resetting them, or even removing them. They could then upload the remainder of the mind, giving people like this tortured woman a clean slate, right? But would it really be her? And if we accomplish this, what would it say about the human soul? That intangible, an immaterial part of us that exists outside of the physical. But theologians and philosophers have expounded on the nature and function of our spirit. But should mortal men trifle with the control and manipulation of such a thing? Well, if men believe themselves to be gods, I don't see any barrier stopping them. One of the origins of the transhumanist movement was the 19th century philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. In 1883, he wrote the book Thus Spoke Zarathustra, in which the character Zarathustra posits the idea for a superhuman man or God-man. This ascension of humanity was presented as a feverish ultimate goal. He called this superior man the Ubermensch. Quote, The Ubermensch shall be the meaning of the earth. I entreat you, my brethren, remain true to the earth and do not believe those who speak to you of superterrestrial hopes. Behold, I teach you the Ubermensch. He is the lightning. He is this madness. 
Behold, I am the prophet of the lightning and a heavy drop from the cloud, but this lightning is called Ubermensch." Unquote. This reads like a religious prophecy, and the obsessive sentiment very much echoes today's quest to strike back at death. The biggest proponents of this effort in the 21st century are the elite super rich. They obsess over it. So what fuels this borderline desperation to achieve godhood? Could they be afraid of what's waiting for them just beyond the threshold of the living? The thought of simply ceasing to exist doesn't elicit the kind of compulsion to find the answer to scientific immortality. No, it feels more like fear and an escape. Perhaps they know the doom awaiting them and reach for the impossible out of necessity, having no other option. Podcaster Scott Eli encapsulates some of the compelling thoughts on what's coming in his podcast. Quote, Humanity stands at the edge of an abyss. Behind is fractured civilization, inequality, infighting, and tribalism. Ahead is transhumanism, where we fully become one with technology and release our final stronghold, actually being human. Like a sort of high-tech racism, transhumanism is going to change the perception of those who aren't upgraded. Unquote. We've barely scratched the surface of this subject, and there's plenty more to come. But in the meantime, check out my other videos here on transhumanism and a ton of other subjects. Like, subscribe, you know the drill. See you soon.